You know what they say? You are what you wear. Hello lovely people of YouTube and welcome back to Mark on Life. As anybody who has ever done performance uh, before knows, costume is an incredibly important part of the process. Now people underestimate how important it is. Obviously if it's um, a period piece, then of course the costume's important. But if it's a modern piece, people don't think that what you wear matters as much. But from the perspective of an actor, it's incredibly important. And actually more important than you feel like as an actor it should be because you think that, you know, you know your lines, you know your objectives, you know your feelings, motivations, all that kind of um, stuff. Why should the clothes you wear make any difference to that stuff? And I can see the logic and in many ways it's true. But actually, as soon as you put on clothes, it changes how you behave. You know, particularly if your, your uh, character wears big, heavy, chunky boots or something or something like that or you know in, in armor you know you wear the very specific footwear or, or you know very bulky pieces or whatever and it changes how you move and how you move changes how you are how you think so often if I'm doing a play or a film I want to get that costume as early as possible and it really really has an amazing effect so I have such huge respect for costume designers on um, on productions because what they do is such an enormously intrinsic part of the process. Now, I never expected for this series that I'm doing, Real Perspectives, to be so heavily costume based. Now, I should have seen it coming a mile away because it's movie based, but in my mind, I didn't realise how important costume would be to every single episode almost. Um, and how difficult it would make the process and how because you know being in a costume can actually really restrict what you're doing as well what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through uh, every episode so far first series and second and have a look at the costume and see what impact it made so let's start at the beginning series one episode one Jaws now this was the first one and I didn't know that I would be spending any money. My first thought would be to do the most crap version of each character that I could. Then it came to the conclusion that if I wanted to do them at all, I had to buy something. I could have like sellotaped teeth and sort of painted my head gray. But I thought these actually, these masks aren't that expensive. I think they're usually about, you know, 15, 10, 15 quid or a bit more if you want a really high quality one. And they, they do the trick. Now in this one, I wore this mask, which you can see is sort of rubbery type mask. Um, I'll show you the inside. Yeah, that's what it looks like uh, inside. Um, and just a, a t-shirt and socks on my hands for flippers. Very high, high quality here in real perspectives. Um, and actually, as you can see, this one has a hole for the mouth. So, um, for the for the ones where I've got masks on, and I made this mistake as I told you last week in um, in Kong, you don't necessarily see my mouth move. But this one, and for a lot of them, I still had the mic on and I recorded sound because you can actually talk out of here, so you can get the sound anyway. But it's much easier for editing. So this one was fun to wear, hard to get any emotion in it, particularly because the eyes are up here, as the sharks are. So, it, you know, you get a little bit of movement in the mask, but it was uh, a bit difficult. So not the easiest of starts, but I like it. It's, for a very cheap, it's very cool. And, um, yeah, it was a good way to start, I think. Episode two, the birds. Um, now, this one I bought, this was a, a big costume. Again, wasn't much money. It was about, again, 20 quid, I think. Um, I also didn't realise how much I would be spending on this series, considering I make zero pounds, zero pence on it. But if you're going to do it, do it. Um, quite comfortable. Um, huge, big costume here with, you know, like bits of sort of feathers on the back and, and the wings. So you can have a bit of a flap. Uh, and then this sort of headpiece thing which is actually a lot this one was a lot easier to wear it's got the eyes on the side and a nice little beak thing 
So you can still see like pretty much the whole face coming out the front. So in terms of uh, this one, this one was a lot easier to wear and um, audio a lot easier to get, although it was windy that day. But yeah, this one, that was really fun. The first one where I can actually sort of play fully and enjoy the costume. Episode three, Predator. Now again, back to a mask. Again, I had no idea that I would be doing a very heavily mask-based comedy series. But it makes sense because they're all aliens and, and animals and creatures. This one, I had to adapt slightly. As you can see here, the mouth um, is open now and it wasn't on the actual mask. It was fully closed, so I chopped it because I thought it would be easier, again, to talk out of it so you can hear the audio clearly. It's actually a pretty good mask. Um, no back, which is annoying. So, again, couldn't really, you know, when I got it on, um, you can only go so far, so you can't do 360s or anything. But it's got nice little bits of dreadlocks on the side, like the movie. These cool uh, sort of tusk teeth thing. Uh, I also bought this very cheaply. I think it's about fiver. His sort of, you know, actual mask that goes and then comes off. Didn't really use it much in the video as much as I would have liked to, or at all, just in one shot. Uh, but it is kind of cool, and maybe, maybe I will use it again. Episode four, another mask, Halloween. Now, obviously, this one is a classic. Michael Myers, um, iconic movie monster, iconic mask. And this character actually, obviously, wears a mask, so it makes a lot of sense. Um, this one was not exactly pleasant to wear, um, but again, still got the audio through it, and it was it was sort of fun. I also had this uh, boiler suit for about a fiver, and then this high vis thing for a couple of couple of quid to make him into a traffic warden. Um, for those who don't know, the mask is based on. Um, William Shatner and was just painted white for the movie so that's the iconic face of Michael Myers now so this one was yeah fun to wear fun to be Michael Myers for the day definitely next episode was Terminator now Terminator I didn't wear uh, a costume as such it was more uh, decals on the face the sort of ones where you you know they're on a piece of paper and you wet them and you cut them out which was it took ages and I had to um, take photographs of all of them so I could remember them if I had to reshoot. In terms of the costume, it was sort of 80s stuff that I bought from various costume shops for a couple of quid each, you know, like the, the wristbands and the headband. Basically wanted to just look like something out of an 80s music video. And that was really fun because I had much more free movement in that one, um, but was still really fun and definitely sort of put me in the character. Episode six, never ending story. This one, I think, was a lot of people's favourite, and I think it might be my favourite as well. So we made this hood thing out of... I bought a couple of metres of cheap white fake fur. Fake fur, obviously. And then me, uh, with the assistance of my flatmate, who does a lot of sewing, made this hood thing from scratch. It's got big, long, flappy ears, and just sort of did the design on the floor, folded it up, and sewed it up. So it's just like a... Like a hood thing that goes over under the chin and then also these sort of hand things again ha handmade that go around the hand and just went like that and then the most irritating part of the costume this this bloody thing which at the time was such a good idea but I hated wearing it because it kept coming off it's got double-sided tape on the other side and it needs to keep being replaced every few minutes because it just the stickiness would go and go and go and I tell you what after a couple of hours of wearing that not fun episodes seven and eight was were again uh, less costumey ones seven was the omen so I just wore uh, my normal clothes and makeup so I borrowed my girlfriend's makeup and did a sort of dark eye sort of stuff um, dark I, I, with bits of sort of red demonic stuff around there again nice to be able to just be the character um, without heavily costuming that one and then uh, episode 8 Home Alone the costume was very simple in that one just sort of a bit rough 
round the edges because it's Kevin McAllister at home. So it wasn't a demon or an animal in that one. So that was that was quite easy, that one. So on to series two. Uh, episode one of series two was... Wolverine. Logan. Um, borrowed these uh, amazing things off uh, my friend Gary Scullion uh, from Sneaky Zebra. Shout out to them. Um, these were really the main part of it. Obviously, I had the the white T-shirt, which I borrowed, and the um, the dog tags, which someone cleverly, Mark Jackson, shout out to him, cleverly said to tape down, because otherwise they'd jingle and jangle every five minutes. And that was it. I had very long hair like I have now. Um, so a fairly simple one, but really fun. These bad boys definitely bring it alive. Although I will say, wearing them for more than about five minutes at a time really hurts your hands. So I'm going to take them off now. Episode two of series two, another mask. Kong. Um, this one was, again, borrowed from uh, my friend Mark Jackson again. And it's a difficult one because it's full, full body costume and big. It's got hands, the feet, everything. Really, really fun. I never dressed up as a uh, gorilla before. Nice, nice hair here. Um, but it made it very difficult. And again, the mouth is not open. So we couldn't get the dialogue either. So a difficult one, but a really fun one. And then the latest episode, episode three of series two, Power Rangers, was this thing. Um, it's a morph suit. Don't know if anyone's ever worn it. It's a stretchy sort of spandex suit. Um, you can get them in green if you're doing the green screen sort of uh, stuff. And this one is um, similar, but like a Power Ranger. Um, really difficult to wear because you've got the zip up the back that you've got to do yourself. And then the hood that comes over, sort of hood that comes over the front with the hood itself. So I actually decided if I was going to get good audio and do it properly, I would just put the hood down and have it on as it is. Um, and I think that was probably a good decision because although it was fun wearing a Power Ranger costume, it was a bit difficult at times. So that's it for this week. What do you feel about costume? Have you worn it in any productions or anything like that? What do you feel? Does it change what you do? Um, did you like the costumes in my videos? Uh, let me know in the comments below and we can discuss. Uh, if you've got any suggestions for any costumes or episodes you'd like me to do, please let me know and subscribe to my channel to see more vlogs and episodes of Real Perspectives. Anyway, uh, from me, Mark on Life, I'll speak to you soon.